So uh, it's already recording and I'm very glad to uh, have you here. Thank you for agreeing to do this uh, conversation. Thank you um, for inviting me. Uh, um, actually, I wanted to start from the fact that one of our patrons suggested to do an interview with you. Uh, so I would like to ask, I know that you also have a patron page. Uh, what is your experience with that? Like. Tell me, when did you create it? What's happening there? Oh, so the Patreon is really new, actually. We started with this like two or three months ago. and But for now, we didn't promote it um, very much because uh, it's a, it was not very easy in the beginning, you know, to understand how it works and how to do the live stream, which support to use, you know, or Crowdcast, YouTube or anything. And so I was like, let's wait a few months, just be sure that everything is, you know, settled and, uh, and then we will start to promote it. So, yeah, it's quite new. But from now, I really, really don't regret it because, uh, yeah, our our biggest fans are there and the, the community is growing step by step, little by little. And uh, we, yeah, we share a lot. And even for us, we know uh, about uh, about our fans, who they are for real. And uh, yeah, it's it's really, really awesome. Do you have a Patreon so also? Yeah, we've been, um, we've been on Patreon for almost two years now. So. <laughs> Yeah, and actually we uh, crowdfunded like our previous album with Patreon only. And I mean, it's I think that we are quite, you know, veterans on Patreon in terms of like the metal scene because it was like almost two years ago and we're super glad to have it. And just like you said, we also have like the biggest fans there. We know about like their families and their pets and everything. So it's... It's really an awesome experience. Yes, yes, yeah. I, I really, I think every band should should try it. I mean, you know, just just to have a a closer contact with their fans and and um, in the beginning, honestly, I was a bit, you know, I didn't know uh, if we would have fans there or not. I didn't know uh, how the community would react about that, you know, because it's it's always hard to judge your work and how to judge your band and you're always scared okay maybe the fans will be disappointed if they know if they do more in another platform and uh, you know and we were scared about you know yeah losing fans or you know maybe people could could think that we are pretentious or something like that you know you have all these questions in your mind before creating it and then you just you just realize that no, it's the good way. It's the the way it is. It's you. You always propose content on your official uh, platforms, and then you just uh, propose more uh, on this on this platform on Patreon. And and I think it's it's very very great to to the fan who just want to know more about behind the scenes and etc. It's awesome. And yeah, two years ago, you're right. Uh, I think I heard. Uh, for Patreon for the first time, like maybe one year ago or something like that. So, and now I, I lots and lots of uh, artists are going on this platform. So if you were there two years ago, you were probably, yes, the, the first ones. <laughs> well, not the first one, but I remember that I created Patreon and then the vocalist of Arch Enemy, Alisa Whiteglass, she created it like half a year later so i was like i created it before her and i remember when she did that i thought okay finally it's going like you know more mainstream and more people will find out about it because back then it was so hard to explain to people what what it is because there were back then a lot of um you know artists like digital artists and i don't know painters and graphic designers and maybe other people but like not people from the metal scene yes yeah so i i hope that your patreon will grow and uh, i wish you success with it because it's really an awesome platform um i also um like 
here on like this my YouTube channel and podcast. I'm very interested in like backstage stuff of the bands, and I'm very curious uh, how does your band uh, function? I mean, you have like band members, and maybe they have some responsibilities. Who is go? Who is doing what? Can you tell me about that? Yeah, exactly. We we try to to you know uh, it, the beginning of the band is Damien the guitar player and and me but we really try to 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 be in the band and like you know every each member of the band has different responsibilities and um so actually in in the big picture Damien uh is creating the music and is recording everything uh, you know the um, demos and everything he producing all the album the music part is it's Damien and uh, I'm writing the lyrics, and uh, so I'm the singer also. And uh, and I'm quite, I would say, managing the band since the beginning. And I'm doing the booking also. We we are quite independent. We never been signed in a booking agency. So so far it was me who did it. And um, yeah, I'm also doing the social media stuff and. Uh, and I'm organizing all the music videos, you know, it's all the, the schedule thing, all the management of the of the band. But now we are signed with the with the management. It's from our label, so uh, he's helping also uh, from the label Dark Tunes. It's a German label. And uh, and the guys, uh, we have uh, Xavier, the the bass player, and he is uh, creating all the. Um, the bonus videos, you know, the, the behind the scenes, the backstage stuff that you can see on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook, etc. It's him who uh, does that. But it, it's quite new also because before it was Damien, he was again doing this and he's doing so, so much things in the band. So now the, the guys are trying to help us and to, you know, to, yeah, to be creative with different things that they were not used to before. And so Xavier is doing the, 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 the videos and we have Thomas, the drummer, he's very involved also. And he created, uh, for example, on stage, we have our, our own lights set up. And so he created, you know, the big structure. He welded it, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's awesome. And uh, we have our other guitarist, Philip, that now he is uh, working more on the um, you know set list and arrangements, and maybe in the future we were talking about a maybe acoustic version of songs. And so he's working on this right now also. So yeah, and we try to to have everyone to to have different skills and uh and actually also when we have a rehearsal we 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 do this kind of exercise like for example every member of the band have to know how to set up the drums set up the electronic parts the 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 the, the in-ear system and everything just wow. to in case you know there is a guy who is sick or you know not able to do it we can do everyone can do it at his place you know so so yeah we but but just you know to to not have the the feeling that that we are just you know in our corner and uh, but but of course it, it's it's really complicated and it requires a lot of time for each other to know how to set up the drums and etc. For example, but uh, but yeah, we we try to be really united uh, even on this on this side of the band. That I talk very much. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, it's come on. I, I'm here to ask you questions, and I really hope that like these videos that I'm making that they will you know, help other artists like to do something with their management. So it's it's great. And I actually never heard about such advice. And I think that every band should try this because like uh, I spoke to other bands and it's quite common. And it's also with our band that there are like several or one main band member and like the rest are helping or something like that, but they're not so much involved. So like, this is what you're having guys it's really it's really cool and i was uh curious do you have like a constant um live sound engineer and maybe light engineer who who are traveling with you like when you're touring 
No, actually, it's also something we, Damien is, is working on it since the beginning of the band, is that, you, you know what I mean when I, when I say that uh, sometimes it's better to, how to say, to, to trust only yourself, because sometimes you cannot trust uh, other people, and I mean not tr trust in, in the bad way, but um, sometimes you don't have a, a sound engineer, he's not available there, so you have to find another one, etc., etc., and it's it's really a mess. So Damien worked on the sound. Uh, um, I mean, to be able, you know, we were working with a kind of iPad or something, and we have our sound in it, and uh, we have a sound which is, I would say, like 90, 80, 90% is already prepared before we go uh, in the venue. And so uh, we have our manager who is taking care of the 10%, the I would say, of the 20% of the sound. So we just have to adjust the, the volumes, for example. But, but the, the biggest part of the sound is uh, prepared by, our, by, by Damien. So actually, it could happen that for a show, if we don't have a sound engineer, we know that the big part is already prepared and we just have to adjust a little bit it depends of the of the venue of course that is really cool that is cool you should be doing like you know lessons for the bands you know how to prepare for everything because it's it's something that we struggle with it and a lot of other bands struggle as well and you know sometimes even if you have a sound engineer Sometimes you cannot bring him on tour because I don't know the number of uh, like bunks on a nightliner is limited or something like that. So it's it's a really cool thing to do. And I actually saw on Facebook that you had like some something like two weeks where you studied like how to improve your stage presence and everything. Can you tell me like how it was? What was your experience? What did you learn? What did you set up? Yeah, actually, it's the first time that we did this um, uh, so long, you know, because of course we practice a lot and we 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 try to spend a lot of time uh, with the band. I mean, we have uh, six hours rehearsal every two weeks, mm -hmm. but, uh, but we for the weekends, etc. We really try to spend a lot of time together, even uh, if it's not regarding the band, but just you know to go to a restaurant or something, just to really have moments together. But yeah, we had this opportunity to have a kind of rehearsal place, and um, and we we just worked. Damien again worked uh, on our sound uh, very specifically, and uh, we also programmed our own lights because the light that you you see it's also ours, and so it's uh, it's programmed with the music. So, you know, we can go everywhere and play. We just turn on the computer and the lights are with the music in the in Cubase. So um, we worked on our lights and uh, and also the um, we we wanted to have a new approach. And so we had a how to say a stage coach, a guy who was there, but he's working, you know, mostly for TV and French TV. And so nothing regarding metal music and metal scene. But that's what we wanted. We wanted to have another point of view that something that we couldn't imagine uh, by ourselves, for example. And so he checked our, our show. So we had to play in front of him and he he said what it was good, what it was not very good, and what we have to improve. And wow, and it was so great. And we are so grateful that he was here. And of course, it, it changed a lot of things and a lot of ideas that you, you never imagined it was possible, you know. And was, what, what he's saying, we would never do this. And, and just we adapted to our own way, and, and then everything works perfectly. And also, what he does and what so so great that he because yeah we are very close in the band i mean you know emotionally and we are very very good friends and we really try to feed to feed it you know uh, to so this guy was there and he also we did every day kind of uh, psychological exercises and uh, we had to to you know to say for example to each other what we like about each other in front of everyone and you know it was very very emotional at some points you know all the band was crying and uh, 
<laughs> but but it was it was so so great and and every day it was like that just things to to connect even more each other's and um yeah it, it works very well and it was two weeks very intense and just after this the last day we had a show uh in france it was just be between two lockdowns so we were very uh grateful and very happy to have this opportunity but yeah having this show just after two weeks like that was just the best thing we, we never had it before and we, we really felt on stage you know we look at each other and you you have this emotional side and you know also that technically it's it's settled so um yeah it was awesome that is really cool because I wouldn't even think like of something like that, you know, spending like the time with the stage coach, because I think that this is what a lot of bands lack nowadays. And even like with our band, I know that when we go on tour, like the first two shows, there are always, you know, you're trying to really get acquainted with each other on stage because uh aside from touring we're not spending a lot of time with each other and i also know like you know there are uh international bands who are not able you know to be in contact like all the time so i think that such such an you know intense two week um thing is can really help a band to be to have like the proper stage presence and to you know to stay together and to be very tight on stage yeah, yeah. And you, you come from the same area? Yeah, we live actually in the same city, but like, you know, it's always very different with bands and with our band, we just, we tried, you know, to, you know, stay in contact all the time and to hang out and to communicate. For some reason, like, it just doesn't work with us. So for us, the best part is when we go on tour, and we are like everything is working together or when we're working on, you know, preparing for a concert or preparing for a video, we just need a purpose and then it's working very well. But like when we're simply practicing without like anything on our radar going on, it's like it's just everything, you know, it seem it feels artificial. And I just think that it's just because like people are different, you know, and we just sometimes need to have some time off with all our band members. So I'm really glad to hear that you guys are so friendly and so close because it seems like like for you it's working like that and it's it's I think it's very precious that yeah. you know, it's um another thing I wanted to ask, I saw like uh your Damien, I think he, he works at a studio or you, you also work. Can you tell about like this uh, studio? I think that it's both music and video production. Exactly, you're right. Um, Damien started to, to produce music a few years ago. And so as we as we he started the, the band, actually, um, he also created his own recording studio. It's called Cyrus Studio. And uh, yeah, it's um it's a house uh with um and he working he's working with the the producer so recording mastering mixing for for bands and artists you know uh, every genre so not just metal but a lot of different kind of music and um but uh, now mostly uh he's really a lot about uh, music videos we have a lot of requests and actually that's me he's I'm video assistant, so I'm working with him uh, and uh, in the mu music video side. And uh, he's also a photographer. So actually everything you do in our band, so the sound, the music videos, the photos and everything, he is doing it. Of course, uh, on the on the plans that when he's not on the videos or on the photos. So we have someone also who helps. Uh, to film when Damien cannot film, but all the all the scenes that you see on our music video when he is not on it, it's him who is filming. So he's just put his guitars aside and he starts to film. And you know, so yeah, he's doing a lot, a lot of things. It's it's crazy. But yeah, we also work with 
uh, different partners. So, for example, we have a um, graphic designer, you know, he's a friend of us, so he's work he's not living in the studio, but he's working really closely with, with us. And uh, and so me, I'm living in the, in the studio, so there is a, a few rooms, kind of apartments, and there is also a place, a room for, for artists and bands when they come they can stay here, you know, and spend a week for or two weeks for or just one day, for example, to record their stuff. And we have a photo studio also here. And so actually the band band can stay here and they can do everything, you know, they can do the photo shoots, the music video, the recording of the of their songs and etc. And that's we, what we wanted to do first. It was yet to to propose a kind of, you know, package and that's. Yeah, we know that it's difficult for a band to find the time. Okay, this week we have to do the photo shoot. Okay, in two months we have to do the music video, etc. And so sometimes there is bands who like to to travel and just to come and to do everything at once, and it's easier for for everyone. And since Damien has all these different skills, he's a workaholic. It's crazy. So it's uh, it's it's very great, yeah. That and and also for us in the bands, we we are so grateful and happy to have him because he does absolutely everything for the bands. And um, so yeah, it's we we are working. Um, so I would say for Damian, it's it's just his life is just in mind and and Cyrus Studio, and for me, it's uh, Cyrus Studio is also a. Uh, a big part of my life with the music videos. That is really cool. So you have like something like a full house, full production, you know, that is that is something that I would love to do as well. But, you know, I'm just trying to stay focused because like I would love to do a lot of stuff, but then like the quality of it can just, you know, just too hard to do everything and that's why like I know also a lot of people a lot of bands approached me like to become their manager because like uh, we're also a DIY band we do a lot of stuff on our own we do the promotion on our own and I just I refused everything all the like offers because I just understand that I won't be able to handle like our band properly if I take care of everybody else you know although yeah. like to Two years ago, I would kill for this opportunity because I wanted so badly, you know, to manage someone. But, you know, I think that uh, it's also super beneficial that you have, like, guys with all these skills, like, and that you can produce everything on your own. Maybe especially, like, now during the pandemic that you have everything, you know, in-house. It's like... You're right. Exactly. It's super cool. And um, you said that you had a show during the pandemic or maybe even a couple of shows, yeah, right? Yes. We had this uh, these shows with the Ginger. Um, and so it was in Germany. So in Germany, there was still some shows. Uh, it was like, it was what, one month ago, but it was an opener uh, show. So outside and there was... Um, of course, restrictions, you know, people has to wear the mask while they are walking and then where when they are sitting, they can take it off, but they have to stay, sit in a, in a, some tables and chairs. But uh, yeah, it was, it was so crazy. And actually people asked us, it's not weird to have people, the crowd uh, sit in front of you. And yes, of course it's weird, but I wouldn't say that it's, uh, not very good or, or or anything. It was just totally different because wh when you're when you go on stage at this moment, you, you you connect with the eyes with other people and and you you look at each other and you you are thinking like about the same like wow okay we we are doing it uh, during these crazy times and I, I actually you forget the the tables and chairs because. There is just a totally different connection. I would say kind of solemn or something like that, you know, something very intense and strong. And you people don't need to move like crazy to feel it. You you really, really feel it. And and for us, we it was it was really, really crazy. We are so, so grateful to be able to play during this pandemic 
because of course there's a lot of bands who doesn't have the chance to do it and um really we really really have fun on this show and uh, yes we also had a second show a uh, second uh, part uh, from our own so after these two weeks of rehearsal we had a a show and it was in kind of hometown show so it was uh, also very intense and precious for us and uh, yeah it was just because yeah you know we are in lockdown again full lockdown again uh, for two weeks now and our show was uh, three weeks ago. So uh, it was just just before. And uh, also people has to wear, but in France they have to wear a mask and have to stay sit and yeah, to keep the mask during all the, all the show. So this was different because you cannot see the people smiling or anything, you know? <laughs> so they are sit and you just see the eyes. <laughs> so it's a bit different, but still it's, um, you feel something. I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's, it's very difficult to, to explain, but yeah, it, it was also so, so great. So great. I understand what you're speaking about because two weeks ago, we also had a socially distanced show here in Kiev and it was also like, well, we don't have a proper lockdown, but you know, the events are restricted all the time. There are different rules all the time. And I remember that we announced the show and there then there were new restrictions and we didn't know up until the very end if it's going to happen because everything is changing. And But we also had like, you know, tables and people seated, just like in Germany. So when you're seated, you can, you know, when you're drinking some, something, you can take off your mask. But then, and I don't know. And I just remember that uh, people in the crowd were telling that like the show was amazing. Everything was great. But they were feeling that we did, didn't like it, like that it was weird for us to play in front of the seated crowd but actually i don't know we were so lucky just like you guys to play in the middle of the pandemic because i don't know it's it's something that may never happen again i hope that actually it won't be happening again that we will get back to normal but it's something very extraordinary and you just feel that people are so hungry for everything and people are still they keep writing us that like it was like a breath of fresh air because no shows are happening. And again, like right now, they seem to be closing everything again. So we were also lucky yet to to play in this the middle of, you know, a loud show. Yeah. Yes, I don't know. It's something very, very crazy. Do you have like any shows planned right now? So we were supposed to play in two weeks in Germany, but um, of course now it's it's cancelled because yeah the shows are we cannot play any shows now in France and in Germany. So uh, we hope it will be rescheduled, but uh, otherwise we have normally in February March we have a tour and uh, especially in Germany also uh, it's uh, all the weekends tour, but. Um, with crematory a german band but uh, probably it will be rescheduled i i hope it will be it won't be cancelled but it will be rescheduled but yeah I, I don't expect this show to happen in february it's too too soon in so 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 far now uh, we don't have any confirmed show anymore so uh, of course it's uh, it's sad but but we stay optimistic and um I think we just have to wait and to adapt in this situation. So um, actually, I think it's great that you do this kind of uh, of talks and sharing with people during this this lockdown. I think it's great that people can connect still each other and that you can propose content. You know that maybe probably during normal times we wouldn't have the time to do it. So it's it's a great idea that you do it and. And these and, and other things that the bands are doing, for example, acoustic versions of songs or, I mean, anything else. I think it also could be, uh, I think, yeah, a, peri a period that you can find 
ideas and be more creative uh, than usual, that just a different way, actually. So, um, yeah, I think it's just important to adapt to the situation. Of course, it's not the best, but you can turn in this thing in a positive uh, situation, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think so as well. And I think that, you know, I started it because I also lack, you know, this communication with other bands that you have on tours or in festivals, because these conversations are usually happen, you know, whenever we're touring, you're sitting after the show at the backstage and you always, you know, exchange your experience of, you know, growing as a band or, you know, doing everything and shooting videos and blah, blah, blah. And I really, I really miss it a lot, like this exchange of experience. And also, um, and again, yeah, it's very hard to find content to post during when, when nothing is happening and we just have to come up with all the ideas and everything. What I think is really great is that just like you guys did, this is the best time to rethink like what we're doing on stage and maybe you know study a little bit learn a little bit because when when the pandemic is over i think that everybody is going to be touring and there will be just no time for this absolutely yeah exactly it's a it's a shitty period but you you have to to turn it as an opportunity and uh but of course you have to reconsider everything and and it's uh it's it's weird and it's it's hard to go out of our comfort zone and to to rethink about uh, okay what what should i think about actually just just this question requires sometimes but but yeah exactly as you say you 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 don't have this opportunity to to work on this after the pandemic and uh yeah, you're right. This is why we 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 did it now, um, and actually, yeah, this is this is why it's also great that you're doing this these live streams. And uh, yes, thank you for that again. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, I guess that I have um, and one more question like prepared, and it is: I checked your uh, online store. And I saw that you're offering a lot of like custom stuff and handmade t-shirts and everything. So my question is, um, how do you work with merch? Uh, who handles like production, shipping and everything? And how often do you offer like this custom stuff? Just. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, for the merch of the band, our merch. So, um, it's not us who are producing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, a factory in Belgium, a friend of us, and uh, but uh, I am taking care of the of the orders, and I'm I'm do, I'm doing the the shipping and everything of all the official official shop. Um, but uh, besides that, so yes, there is this, and there is yeah, of course I'm. It's been a few years now that I like to to customize my old clothes and old band shirts that I, I didn't wear for ages or you know sometimes they are broken and instead of throwing it I just try to adapt again you know and to create something different and so I thought yeah maybe I should do this for the band also because I do it's always a little bit different it's it can never be the same all the time you know I always do something different and so yeah I proposed it in the in the shop and uh, actually it's it's mostly in live shows that it works because people can see it. Of course, it's different when when you when you see it, but yeah, it's um, it's great. People really like it because it's unique all the time. And um, and besides the bands, you know, I'm also tour manager and merchandise for other bands. And so when I go on tour with bands, I propose them also uh, every day. I do one or two custom shirts that I sell for them at the merch. And uh, the bands are really, really like it because they also never have the opportunity to have custom shirts. And, uh, and yeah, I, I, I really, I really love to do it for my band, but for other bands also, it's, uh, it's very interesting. I see that the fans really, really like it. And uh, 
And besides that, something else that I do is that I work for a shop called darkduckmerch.com. And uh, it's from the, from the label, or the label we are signed on. And um, I create the merch for the band. So I press, I have a press, you know, to create merch. So we don't use it for our band because we need big, big quantities. But for uh, bands who just want exclusive shirts or limited series or mugs or, or you know, uh, I don't know, a lot of different things, I, I do it. So I, I, also, I also have this press to create exclusive things, exclusive uh, shirts and items. So, uh, yeah, I, it's, it's a lot of different things, but um, everything is connected with customizing things. And uh, I really like to to create stuff and to yeah to find ideas and uh, yeah cool. <laughs> I love it. I just love it because uh, we also like in the band there are like me and our keyboardists. We are like the main guys because like we also do some management stuff and writing music and everything. But I just I also handle merch and I I just love all these things and I'm so curious like how it is happening with other bands and like again even you even do merch so it's like really full production for you like within the band and I'm so excited to hear about that because uh, I mostly want to talk to bands who are who have this DIY approach you know because I think that it's really something that is very common nowadays and that the bands can you know can survive on their own without you know having a huge team of people because it's not that efficient and just like you said it's very hard to find people who you really trust with all these things because you know there there is a very high possibility that something will be fucked up and yes. you know sometimes it's really better to handle everything on your own so um thank you for doing this conversation and i really i think that there are a lot of insights for people like for your fans and for other bands and i hope that we will all learn like from these conversations and uh, i wish you success with patreon with um your new music and I hope that we will meet somewhere on tour, like on, at the backstage at some festivals. And I hope that we will stay in touch with you. Of course, of course. I, I really thank you for this opportunity. I really liked this, uh, this conversation. And uh, yeah, for, for me, it's the same. I'm really looking forward to, to be on stage again. And I really would love to meet you guys uh, in the future. Uh, that would be with great pleasure. And I wish you the best uh, also and uh, stay strong during, this, during times. <laughs> Thank you.